Hello, this is Geo, and this here is a simple circuit board. I actually took this out of a pinball machine. You can see it's a Bailey pinball machine. It actually belongs to a auxiliary uh, light display, and so it controls the auxiliary lights. It has some transistors here, some resistors, a couple of controlling chips, and uh, some some um, pin connectors. Uh, where the wires are connected to. And I've been having some problems with this board. Um, first, I will show you where I got this board out of. Okay, so here I am in the pinball machine itself. A whole bunch of boards, a lot of circuit boards, a lot of wires. But basically, I got this board out of this side here, and it was connected to several of these um, pin connectors. So, and each one of these uh, little plugs come come with multiple wires that go many places. Each one of these pins are connected to a wire. And so I just took these pin connectors, or these uh, connectors, out of the board. So now that you see where I got this board out of, back to my story. I've been having problems with this board. Uh, none of the auxiliary lights seem to be flashing on a regular basis. And so I first thing I took it out uh, and plugged it. And I just examined it. I examined the front, I examined the back, and everything kind of looks okay. You know, the solders looks okay, just visual inspection, and uh, all the connections, the trans transistors, the resistors, etc., seem in good conditions. These pins seem like they're pretty functional. So I went ahead with my multimeter and uh, tested a lot of these transistors and resistors, and everything seems to work. And I actually did test the power on some of these uh, power testing um, spots and I was getting power it's like a little tester spot here that says 5 I don't know if you can see this but 5 volt test so I tested that and I was getting 5 volts at that location and so I put it back in I I tried it out again and it still wasn't working so I pulled it out again and decided to do a little more investigating Okay, so when I want to investigate something in more detail, I take out my hand lens. And this is kind of a specialty hand lens. This actually magnifies things uh, up to 10, 10 times larger. Uh, I think geologists use these to examine minerals, and I think jewelers um, use these as well, and they, ca they actually call these jeweler loops. Sometimes you've heard of these. But uh, you could use any kind of magnifying glass, but these really do help you blow things up and really get in really closely and you could see things in very minute detail. And so with my glass, I just flipped over and I was interested in what this solder looked like. Now, I have reasonable eyesight. I do wear some uh, glasses. I have a little stigmatism. But I could still see pretty well. And I just from visual observations, these solder joints look pretty good. But with this loop, something, things started popping out. A lot of flaws with these joints, in particular, where these, um, where these he header pins come in, these connector pins. So here's a close-up of some of these connectors. As you can see here, I'll show you with this one. Just a bunch of wires, and they uh, just get plugged in and connect to the pins. But as you kind of rotate these things out, you could easily bend bend the pins, and uh, that could that could crack some solder. So as you can see, these pins do they can get a lot of uh, wear and tear as you pull those plugs in and out, and these pins could periodically bend and kind of get deformed. And so the, these solder joints are known to get cracked up and sometimes fail. But I didn't really realize how difficult identifying these could be until I took out my hand lens. And I'll show you a photo now that shows the problem. Okay, so you could really see in this photo blown up what's going on. Now my eyesight didn't pick this up, the hand lens did. You see significant cracking along this header pin. And this is enough cracking, this is what you're looking at here is a pin uh, for ground and that prevents the current from going into that that pin and so that is my problem the current has stopped where that crack is is not enough conductivity at that crack to to let this board continue to work 
So I think just the moral of the story of this one video is don't give up looking, you know, don't just look at these circuit boards with your visual eye. You really need to get in close sometimes to examine and really find out the problem. I mean, I know where that crack is right about here, and I still can't see it with my eye. But definitely with, with a hand lens, maybe not as powerful as this, maybe just with a standard, uh, you know, kind of a hand lens reading glass you could start spotting up these flaws. And so I'm going to have to go back and resolder some of these, these header pins so I could get this current flowing again. So I hope this video helped you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.